How's everyone's day been so far? Good? Interesting? Enjoyable? Not too hard on the brain? <laughs> All right, it's been wonderful to be here to, um, to listen to the, the discussions and the, and the panel. And uh, it's been awesome that I've been uh, invited here to, to share with you this afternoon. Some of you I do know because I would have been to your uh, centres. Um, that is my, my day job, if you like, is visiting uh, preschools, childcare centres, uh, primary schools and high schools to share Aboriginal culture uh, through music and dance, because that's what I enjoy doing most. And uh, by the looks of it, so do you. Seeing everyone up dancing today, it's great to see. That's what it's about, participation. Our culture, being the oldest living continuous culture in the world, is exactly about that. It's about inclusion, it's about participation. Traditionally, uh, it was everyone's role in a family, as it still is today, to raise children. It wasn't just your mother and father, because our, our large extended families, we would have, you might have 10 women that we would call mothers, we would have 10 fathers, 150 aunties, 150 uncles, 20 grandparents, and it was all of their responsibility to raise children particularly from a young age. Fathers, on the other hand, traditionally, wouldn't have a great deal to do with children in their early years. They were mainly raised by the women in their family uh, until they reached a certain age, teenage years. That's when the dads would take over and teach them the rules and responsibilities of being young men in their uh, communities and their responsibilities as, as uh, men in their communities. And that still applies today, although a lot of uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, uh, majority of us live in cities, uh, country towns, regional centres. Um, of course, we still have people that live in remote area communities, still living a, a fairly traditional way of life. But uh, it doesn't mean that by living in the cities or in country towns that we that we lose some of those traditional uh, values and uh, cultural ideas. Um, that's how we maintain our culture, uh, it's through our stories, through our language, our songs and dances, as, as we have uh, seen earlier. So when I was younger, um, I grew up in Western Sydney. I was born and raised in Sydney. and. Uh, being an Aboriginal person um, wasn't really different from being anybody else. I was a human being. I went to school with people from many different nationalities. I could go after school to my Turkish friend's house and have Turkish food for dinner. Next day I can go to my Vietnamese friend's house and have Vietnamese for dinner. Or vice versa. They'd come to my house and have kangaroo. <laughs> or bangers and mash. <laughs> so. Um, so I was lucky growing up with, um, with people from many different cultures and, and nationalities. Um, and we do have a saying that Australia was multicultural before anybody else came here. Because we are a country that was traditionally made up of many different language groups or tribes or nations, if you like, who all have their own languages, their own uh, culture, their own songs and dances, stories, etc., etc. Um, so we were very multicultural, just even more so now. And we, um, Indigenous people welcome, we welcome people from all cultures to our, to our, lunch, our country, our land. And uh, our culture is about sharing, it's based on sharing. Uh, and that's sharing in it, everything, whether it's uh, food, uh, or s songs, or dances, or artwork, or whatever it may be. Uh, that is the basis of our culture. And through that, we learn to respect the differences of each other's cultural practices. And, and of course, we, um, we still do that today, and we try to apply that with, uh, with people from other cultures. So, um, 
I've got some instruments here that I'm going to share with you, but I also have something that I would like to share with you. <coughs> and it's in your, uh, in those black bags that you have. I don't know if anyone's found it yet. I couldn't find it, <laughs> but it was in there. It says Sydney language welcome song. And there's a picture of me performing at a school, I think, by the looks of it. And on the back is a story that I wrote based on a, uh, on a traditional story of, uh, of one of our creators called Bayami. But it's a Sydney language welcome song that I'd like to share with you today. Now, I don't have a lot of time, so um, you just have to listen and pick up quickly. Of course, we do have an oral tradition in Aboriginal culture. We learn everything by ear. Uh, but with today's technology, we can learn it with written words, by videos, on the internet, many different ways you can learn. <clears throat> so I'd like to um, share this song with you. Uh, now it's something that you can do. A, a lot of centres that I visit, um, and as we've heard today already, I think I've heard three or four people uh, already do an acknowledgement of country. Um, this is another way that you can do it, through a song. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite simple and it's very straight to the point. Um, there are, down the bottom, the, the uh, pronunciation of, of the words, but I'll tell them to you and you can just repeat after me. That's the easiest way to do it. All right. Um, now, we do need one person, actually two people, to who's got a big loud voice here? I'm sure some of you do. Oh, they're pointing at you, are they? I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Sally Ann. Sally Ann. Okay, you can stay there, Sally Ann. <laughs> All right. So, Sally Ann is one volunteer. Now, I know there aren't many males here, but it's fantastic to see you guys. And uh, hopefully, as, as Monica pointed out, we do need more men uh, working in uh, early childhood. So, hopefully, uh, we get a few more of us along. So perhaps one of the uh, gentlemen here would like to volunteer as well. Okay. And your name is? Ben. Ben? Okay. So Sally Ann and Ben are going to be our uh, call outs. So we all start uh, with the sound or, oh, which sounds like this. Oh, which lasts for four beats. You go longer if you like, if you like to sing it longer, but we'll keep it short. Uh, after that, we'll have um, Sally Ann, if you would mind shouting out Yora. Yora! Perfect. <laughs> Did everyone hear that? <laughs> All right. After Sally Ann says Yora, everybody else replies with you. you. If you can hit that high note, you. you. That's right. And, and then Ben will shout out Gamarada. Perfect. And everyone says, ah. <laughs> yeah, like you just had a nice cold drink. You go, ah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so shall we give that a go? So we'll go, oh, you're a, you. Camarada, ah. Excellent. All right. Have we got that? Let's try it again. Three, four. Oh. Nice. All right. Then repeat after me. Ungun. Ungun gama. Ungun gama nia. All right. Now let's try and sing it. I'll sing it for you first. Ungun gama nia. Ungun gama nia. Cool. Next line. Tali. Nura. Tali nura. Ungun. So. Tali Nurangun. All right, so, and we sing that the same way. So I'll just demonstrate. Ungun Gamaniya Tali Nurangun. Try it with me. Ungun Gamaniya Tali Nurangun. Excellent. All right, you guys sound like professionals. All right. Um, okay, so that's repeated four times. All right, so I'll just sing it for you. And you can join in. 
Ungun gamania tali no rangun, Ungun gamania tali no rangun, Ungun gamania tali no rangun, Ungun gamania tali no rangun. Perfect. All right, and then there's a little break, uh, and that's the sound air, like what you breathe. Air. Cool. All right, everyone got that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we'll try it from the beginning up to there, and then we can try and squeeze in the second verse. Okay, so from the beginning, three, four. Oh. I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the word, Sally, yeah? Let's rewind. Yora. All right, you got it? Locked in? Okay, we'll, let's try again. Ben, you right? You know yours? Okay, three, four. Oh. Yora. Woo. Ah. ah. Three, four. Ungun gamania tali no rangun. Ungun gamania. Ungun gamania. Ungun gamania. Eh. Eh. Cool. All right. Now, on to the next verse. Uh, repeat after me. Panya Jaminka. Chalkala. Nia. So, Panya Jaminka. Chalkala Nia. Panya Jaminka. Chalkala Nia. All right. And that's sung exactly the same way as we sing the first verse, and it's repeated four times. Okay, so it goes. Panya Jaminka Chalkala Nia. Panya Jaminka Chalkala Nia. Panya Jaminka Chalkala Nia. Panya Jaminka Chalkala Nia. And then it goes back to the air again. And finish with cool. Beautiful. Like cool, but no L. You know, like cooey? Cool. All right. Okay, I think we have it. Now, just to let you know, Ungun Gamania means we invite or we call you, whoever you're welcoming to your centre or to your land or your home. Tali Nurangun uh, means uh, onto your land or your home. Okay, Tali Nurangun. So, Ungun Gamania, Tali Nurangun, we invite you or call you to our home. Banya Jaminka, Chalkala Niya means we uh, embrace you. Okay, Panya Jaminka, Chalkala Niya. We embrace you and extend our hand in friendship. Okay, because that's how we welcome people to country. All right. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's go from the top. All right. Three. Sally, and you're right. You got it. All right. Three, four. Oh. You're up. Hey. Ah. Two, three, four. Ungun gamania tali no rangun. Ungun gamania tali no rangun. Ungun gamania tali no rangun. Ungun gamania tali e. E. Panya jaminka chaklania. Panya jaminka chaklania. Panya jaminka chaklania. Panya jaminka chaklania. E. E. Beautiful. Well done. Give yourself a clap. All right. Do you like that song? Now, when you're driving home, you'll be singing. All right. Just make sure you're paying attention while you're singing. All right. This is a song that I wrote, and it is sung. It's written in the language what we could now call the Sydney language. 
which is made up of all the languages and dialects that were spoken right across the Sydney Basin. Okay? It's a song that you can use if you feel like you're comfortable in doing that at your centre. Of course, if you come from up the central coast or up the Blue Mountains, you might look to use um, language from that area. And the best place to do that is always to ask uh, people in your community. Um, they may not know the language, but they may know somebody who does. Nowadays, there are, there are quite a few um, uh, resources and particularly um, dictionaries. I know there's a there's a Dara dic dictionary here in Sydney. There's also a, a Darawal dictionary for um, southern uh, Sydney as well. But uh, a lot of a lot of the uh, language here in Sydney, whether it's Dara or Darawal, are pretty much the same language. There might be a few different words, but um, it is a shared shared language. So feel free to use that. Um, if, you, if you're comfortable in doing that. Um, you can do it just with voice. You can accompany it with hand clapping. Find some sticks. You can use sticks as well, but you can always use hand clapping or just the voice on its own. All right. Um, now, I was going to do a little smoking, and, and Mabera brought me a little candle to do that, but... Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to skip that part because often I'm asked by centres to um, to do a smoking ceremony and ask people ask what is it and why do you do it and so on and so on. Um, it, it's always good to again look for people in your community who may have that uh, knowledge of a smoking ceremony. It's not something you do for fun. Um, Often uh, a, a couple of centres that I do regularly once a year, they'll get me in at the beginning of the year when they're welcoming new families uh, to their centres, is to invite all the family uh, on, a, on a, a special day, uh, with the children of course, and, um, and I include them in this smoking ceremony. Uh, done in a traditional way, with a bowl, with the gum leaves and so on, I'm sure some of you have seen or may have even had one. Um, another way you can do that if you can't find anyone locally is just um, by using candles, even incense, and uh, and it's about basically about um, uh, bringing positive energy, and it's a it's a good way to to get families involved at at your centre as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional uh, smoking ceremony. Um, so we've found our song. Um, I'd like to probably move along. I know I don't have a lot of time. Where's my timekeeper? How am I going there? More than 10. More than 10, all right. Now, something that I use as an educational tool is this instrument. I'm sure you all know what it is. Is anyone that doesn't know what it is? What's it called? Didgeridoo. Um, it has many names, in fact. Didgeridoo is thought to be a made-up name. It's not one of our language names. In fact, it has about 40 different names in different languages. Uh, it originates from Northern Territory. But nowadays, it's pretty much played right around Australia. Um, lots of people have now included in their traditional uh, music or in their contemporary music as well. Um, I'm going to tell you three other names. See if you can say them. One is Yidaki. That is the original name for the didgeridoo, Yidaki. That's right. Another one is Ladawa. And uh, one of my favourite names comes from North Queensland, and that's Yigi Yigi. That's right. The kids love that one. They think it's a funny sound. Um, now, there are lots of myths and uh, taboos and so on, et cetera, et cetera associate, associated with the didgeridoo, and people often ask me when I visit centres, can our children play it? Um, uh, now, some people might be uncomfortable with that in the community. It's always good if, um, if you have a visitor coming to your centre uh, who's going to play didgeridoo or do a workshop or something like that, uh, if you have any Indigenous students at your centre, it's always good to check with the parents first. 
um, because everyone has different feelings about it. Uh, generally speaking, um, uh, or here in New South Wales, um, Aboriginal women do not generally like their children playing didgeridoos, some won't allow them to touch them at all. Um, so, and it's different for everybody. Um, traditionally though, in Northern Australia, theatre is only played by men. Uh, so normally boys would start learning from you know, a young age in their teenage years. Um, in a, and that's still the case today, but in a, in a <coughs> modern form, if you like, or in today's day, um, personally, I don't have a problem with children um, playing didgeridoos or making them. I've visited a lot of centres, and some of you have probably done that yourself, where you get the, the toilet rolls or the cardboard rolls, and uh, you get ch children to, you know, make them and, and paint stories on them or whatever. That's, that's fine. There's, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and it is believed in, in most Aboriginal cultures that when children are young, they're still innocent. Um, they, they don't learn about the, uh, the rules, as we say, until they become teenagers. And I have a 17-year-old daughter. And um, when she was young, she's grown up me, grown up listening and watching me play didgeridoo. Um, and she used to come and grab it when she was a little four or five-year-old and, and play it. Um, now, I didn't, I didn't mind because I, I knew what the rules were. Um, my wife got a bit upset sometimes, but, um, but my, my daughter enjoyed playing it. She would just jump on it and blow and make a couple of sounds and she thought she was fantastic, you know, um, being like a dad. Um, it wasn't until that she got older that, um, you know, she started to learn, well, it, in our culture it's, it's a male instrument um, uh, and, you, and you're not allowed to play it, particularly in public anyway because you might offend, offend other uh, Aboriginal people. Um, so it, it's really, um, it is a personal thing um, and it's always good to ask any of the, any uh, Aboriginal women in your community how they feel about it as well. But as far as children playing, uh, whether they're playing on cardboard rolls or some sort of other piping or whatever it may be, that's fine. Uh, again, it's your call, it's how you feel about it. Um, and it's also about respecting um, those cultural differences as well, as we all do. All right. So, um, I'm going to play a little game with you, and it's something that I do in most centres, those of you that know me. Check, check. Is play a little game. It's a way of um, introducing one the didgeridoo to children because a lot of them say, oh, "I've heard the didgeridoo." I ask them, Have, "Has anyone heard a didgeridoo?" And they say, "Yeah, I saw it on play school." <laughs> they did. <laughs> Not that Monica was playing, but but I did do a recording quite a few years ago with my brother, and uh, I was playing didgeridoo. So whether they've seen that or another version, I don't know. Um, but most days. Uh, as, as a lot of children tell me, I saw a didgeridoo down at Circular Quay. Yeah. All right, with the boys down there because they're there every day, 24-7 just about. Um, so most, most children that have heard of didgeridoo are a little bit familiar with it. But I like to, um, a way of introducing them to uh, different sounds and it's all about listening um, and introducing some animals. Um, I'm surprised sometimes I go to a centre and, they, and the children know every sound that I do. I can go to other centres and they've, they don't have any idea about some of Australia's um, uh, native animals. Um, so I like to introduce that through sound. Uh, and then later on, you can go away and show them some of these birds or animals in their books or on the internet nowadays, um, the different birds and animals. Um, because we have so many stories about birds and animals, I'm sure you uh, are aware of some of them, or have uh, children's books with Aboriginal stories in them. Um, so because a lot of our stories are about birds and animals, then it, of course, translates to our art, our music, our songs, our dances as well, because that's how we tell stories. Right? So I'm just going to demonstrate a, a test your uh, knowledge and play a few um, Australian bird or animal sounds. Here we go. <laughs> Thank 
That, of course, was a... Kubara. Oh, I'm glad you got that one right. <laughs> All right, here's another bird. <laughs> Who said cockatoo? Somebody over there, yes. Over here, all right. I, I was at a preschool before I came here this morning. I was at a Montessori school, and after playing that sound, I said, uh, a child said, it's a chicken. <laughs> it's not a chicken. It does have white feathers, though. All right. Dingo, yes. Now, of course, they say, it's a dog, which, of course, it is. A dingo is a dog, but they don't bark like dogs. They howl more like a wolf. So I say, well, who's got a pet dog at home? And they all put their hands up. Yeah, I've got a dog. So I have to play a dog for them. <laughs> And it was sunny this morning, the answer I got for that, I said, what kind of dog was it? And it was a border collie. <laughs> All right, I'll play one more for That's right. Now, of course, kangaroos don't sound like that, but to imitate the sound of kangaroo hopping, that's what we would do. So those are just some of the sounds. There are others as well. Now, there's something else that I do. I've got two minutes left. Um, now, I'd like to sing you a quick song. Um, and I use my, I use my um, what most people call boomerangs. Who says boomerangs? All right, it's a very Australian way of saying them. Boomerangs. The original way is boomerang. That's right. Boom, 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 boomerangs. All right? Rather than boomerangs. All right? Which is a very Australian way of saying it. Um, and the word boomerang actually comes from the language of the Sydney people. It's now used right around the world. Now, um, I use them to make shapes, uh, like so, by telling stories. So the song I'm going to sing you quickly before I finish is about a bird, a sea eagle. The seagull in my song is catching fish. That's what they eat. And of course, the fish is in the ocean. All right? Very clever, aren't I? <laughs> so the kids say, how does he do that? Oh, magic. Anyway, to finish, um, quickly, here's the song. Chiri biri yanga yanga chiri yali yanga yanga chiri biri yanga yanga chup chiri yali yanga yanga chiri yali yanga yanga chiri yali yanga yanga hey hop 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 There's another verse, but I'll just sing you one. Another one? All right. Now, you can, you can join in the actions, all right? When I sing the air part, all right, you can put your hands on your shoulders if you have room. If not, you can just shake your wing because they represent the eagle's wings. So if you've got room to do that, if not, you do it without your arms and you just do what most of you would know as a shimmy, like this. <laughs> all right? Shaking your wings, that's what it represents. And you have to say three hubs. Hub, hub, hub. Okay? I'll help you. All right, here we go. <laughs> 
Chari Ali Yaga Yaga Chari Bidi Yaga Yaga Chari Ali Yaga Yaga Chari Bidi Yaga Yaga Chari Ali Yaga Yaga Chari Ali Yaga Yaga Ready? A. A. Hop. 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 That's it. All right. All right, now I think I'm, am I out of time, timekeeper? All right, now I'd love to stay up here. I could probably up, be up here for another hour at least to, uh, to share some things with you, but I know you've had a long day as well. So um, I'd like to thank, uh, again, thank Manny and, and, uh, and Mabera for inviting me here to, uh, to share some of my culture with you today. Um, and hopefully it's, um, you've enjoyed it and you've learned something as well. And hope to see you at some of your centres sometime. Thank you.